Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and I've been recording tutorials all freaking day long. So, I'm out of jokes, but I do have a pretty good tutorial for you anyway. And here it is. Okay, that was pretty quick, but uh, you get the idea? Basically, we have this single light streak using only the built-in tools of After Effects 7 Professional. Here's another example of this effect with a nice uh, 3D title as well. And you can see I've used the uh, depth of field to really enhance this shot. So anyway, why don't we go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a new composition. And I'll go ahead and use the DV preset at 23.976, 24p, basically. Now, in a previous tutorial, I used a texture from the Riot Gear collection to create a 3D room. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that really quick, but for more information about that, check out that tutorial. Basically, from the Riot Gear collection, I'm going to go down to the grungy textures, the lower resolution grayscale, and we'll take number 9, bring it out, this nice, uh, nice wall. We're going to hit F4, turn into a 3D layer, rotate it, move it over, duplicate it, move it over, and duplicate it again, rotate it as a back wall, perfect, duplicate it once more, create a nice ceiling okay let's move that forward a little bit and we'll scale it up so that we don't see the uh, burned edge there okay I'm gonna create a new camera we we'll use a 35 millimeter preset and I'm gonna take these camera tools and just kind of zoom out in the room now remember, like I said, this is all covered in another tutorial, so I'm just kind of going through it so you can see. And then I'm going to take texture number four, drag it out, turn it to a 3D layer, rotate it to the floor, drag it down to not at the bottom of the texture, but just above it. And I'll scale it up just a little bit and reposition it like that. So now we've uh, created our uh, 3D room in record time. And now I'm going to create a new light. And we'll make the light orange, maybe about 100% intensity. And looks like we'll be increasing that intensity. And just like in the previous tutorial, I'm going to take this background texture and bring the exposure down to compensate for the brightness of the light. Let's go and counteract the lighting um, and add some contrast to our floor texture. And if we look at full resolution, it looks pretty good. You can also play around with the light color to create the look you might be after. Okay, so the next step in this is creating the particles. So I'm going to create a new solid and choose OK. Then I'm going to choose Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World. And we've created this great looking particle um, system. And if we change the grid showing information, if we turn that to off, we can see just our particles. And if we play around with these settings, we can make this look a little bit better. First of all, let's go ahead and turn the radius down to zero for the X, Y, and Z. Also, turn the velocity down to zero. Inherit velocity zero, gravity zero, everything zero. So now we just have a single little particle. Perfect. Now, here's the tricky part. We need to create a new null object. Now this null object it's going to be basically the source point for our particle. This CC particle world effect is very cool, but the only way to animate it in 3D space is to move the producer XYZ coordinates around. There's no real 3D operator, 
and to animate this way is very awkward. Um, not a good way to do it. Also, we want to change the particle type to a lens convex. So we just kind of have a, a little line. So anyway, animating using these tools can be done, but it's a little tricky. So what we want to be able to do is control this in 3D space in After Effects' built-in tools. So the only way to do that is to use a null object that we then turn to a 3D layer. Now that this null object is a 3D layer, we can move it around and we have all the control of a regular 3D layer. Now, the problem is CC Particle World has arbitrary values for its X, Y, and Z. So the position for this null is X, Y, Z, and we have these three values, whereas here it starts at zero and doesn't quite translate perfectly. So with a little trial and error, I was able to come up with what this arbitrary data means for the most part. So what we're going to do is create an expression that links these values to this null object. First, alt-click on the X. Then pick whip the position of the null. Easy enough, almost. What we have to do is set up a variable. We'll call this X. X equals this comp dot layer, all this stuff. And because it's using the zero value, we're sampling X. If it was 1, it would be Y, and if it was 2, it would be Z. So for this param, we'll use X. Then we want to choose minus this comp dot width, meaning minus this comp's width. Then we want to divide the result by 2. And then we type a colon. So basically, this creates a value that is essentially 0. Now, X, we're going to recall this variable. So X equals all this. And what we want to do is divide it by this comp dot width. Okay, so that's X. Now let's do Y. I'm going to copy this whole expression, click Y, and paste this whole expression. Then I want to change the variable from X to Y. You don't have to do this, but it just helps to organize it. And we want to change this comp dot width to this comp dot height. This, everything else stays the same. Oh, and we want to change the position to sample from the Y. So in this case, 1. So 0, 1, 2. Click away. Then for the z-axis, we'll alt-click, we'll paste our whole expression that we have here. And now we are using now the z-coordinate, so we'll change this to 2. But because z starts out at 0, we want to take all of this off. And simply do x, or let's change the variable, z. Um, z. And basically we want to do z divided by this comp's width. A shorter version of this expression would simply be this value divided by this comp dot width, but just in the style of the other three, uh, I figured it'd be best to do it that way. Now that these are linked up to this null object, we should be able to move this null object around and the particle should follow it pretty well. So if I say we're to add an expression to the position of the null, like wiggle three Oops. Wiggle 3, comma 50. We would get this right on effect. In fact, let's change it to 100. Okay, so you see you see what's happening here. You see the potential. So now let's go ahead and set this particle system up. Now that we've created a way to adjust its position, let's go back in and adjust the look. So firstly, let's bring the birth size and the death size down and then bring the birth size up just a little bit so that it starts out thick and then kind of fades out. Also, we'll make the birth rate a lot more so it fills in, maybe uh, 75. And let's make the birth size a little bit smaller so it's a nice thin looking particle streak. Okay. So I say that's looking pretty good for our uh, for our first try, 
And now what we want to do is uh, just enhance it a little bit more. If we go into the options for the particle world effect, we get this funky little menu, but if we go to the opacity map, we can change it to fade out round. And that way, the particle starts exactly at the tip of our null object, because otherwise it sort of fades on. And uh, this is just a better way um, to get the particle to start right away instead of uh, having a slight delay. Um, next thing we want to do is, uh, let's organize this again. Um, we'll call this uh, particles, and we'll call this point. And let's go ahead to our particle, add a glow. So I'll choose effect, stylize, glow. And uh, we'll change the color B to like a nice orange color. And we'll change the glow colors to AB colors. And just uh, increase the intensity and the radius just a little bit. Okay, let's check it out. And uh, there's some other things we can do to enhance it as well. I'm going to go ahead and delete these keyframes and increase the wiggle expression so that we can just see some random movement. And I want to show you some other ways to work with this effect. If we take this null object and just move it, that works pretty well. And remember, we are in 3D space completely. Okay. Remember to turn on the uh, camera depth of field to uh, even make it more impressive um, like you see here. Okay, well I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name is Andrew Kramer and you can find me at creativecow.net in the After Effects forum. And of course you can visit my site www.videocopilot.net. Um, we have a bunch of great tutorials and products. Um, anyway, I'll see you next time.